okay good morning so we have done uh, yes uh, uh, in the, the last class some minimization of the norm basically the projection theorem so let me just uh, recall that uh, uh, projection theorem yeah this is the projection theorem yeah this is the projection theorem uh, here norm of x uh, given a compact con uh, closed convex set subset of a Hilbert space then any point there is a minimum point in k. So, this is the theorem which we have done here ok and now we will use that to prove some general abstract theorems. So, basically proving two or three abstract theorems uh, uh, for the ok. So, let me try to do some results now based on that. So, we will start uh, theorem. This is theorem of what is called a variational inequality, variational inequality ok. First we will prove the case when A is a, uh, uh, symmetric and then because symmetric case is essentially the previous minimization problem, but it is not symmetric uh, it is something different. So, let A from H to H, H is a Hilbert space be a symmetric elliptic. So, all the thing elliptic or coercive and continuous bilinear form, continuous bilinear form. Uh, and k be a closed convex uh, subset of H, subset of H. Then uh, uh, let f is in H. Of course, f will be able to take in H prime also but in PDEs that is important, but uh, as such we do not require here because H prime can be identified to H, uh, but when you study PDE and PDE problems you see a difference of it. Uh, then there exists unique U in K such that A of U uh, V minus U greater than or equal to f v minus u. This is the variational inequality. F this is called the variable. Further, you can be characterized, characterized by a minimization problem by find u in k and uh, j u equal to minimum of j v over v in k. So, it is a minimization problem where your j v is equal to half of a v v minus f v. f v is the inner product if f is in h if you treat f v as a uh, in H prime then it is a duality bracket that is. So, the proof is actually, so let me give you the proof quickly. Proof is this is basically this problem can be converted into a problem of the minimization of the norm which we have done the previous thing by redefining that uh, norm. So, the redefining the inner product uh, uh, because A is a symmetric form A the first note A defines a new inner product, new inner product on H, H as denoted by norm U V inner product A U V 
is equal to a u v. So, verify this, this you can verify. You need symmetry that is what you write and the further this is equivalent to this is also verify this is equivalent to to the standard inner product to the given inner product on it to the given inner product on h that is what you have to do verify this also verify ok. So, the defines an inner uh, norm also right. So, the norm of u norm of u we denote by it to it is in a product with uh, that is nothing but you are a u u power half. So, it is an equivalent inner product. So, uh, and immediately you can see the following ok. Now, these are the uh, uh, two things look at this functional look at v going to f of v. This is a linear continuous functional on h since the norm a is equivalent to the given norm this is also linear and continuous is linear and continuous with respect to the new norm also. You know that this is linear and continuous with respect to the given norm this is also linear and continuous with respect to this norm. Therefore, by re-representation theorem re-representation theorem. So, apply re-representation theorem with respect to the new norm there exists f tilde in H such that f v can be represented f, uh, as uh, f tilde v. You will get f equal to f tilde of v with respect to new inner product keep that in mind ok. With respect to f tilde v that is equal to a of f tilde v ok. So, here is a small exercise for you immediately prove that now your j v is equal to half of norm of v minus f tilde with respect to, to this norm square and minus half of this just a computation f tilde with respect to this no ok square we just compute that ok. So, what this shows that look at so mean this is a constant this is a constant. So, minimizing j v is equivalent to minimizing this one this is precisely your minimization problem. So, the e minimization the minimal value may change, but the minimizer will not change which minimizes because once you are minimizing certain things by adding a constant the minimizer will not change at all. So, you can minimize this ok. So, that is the that is it then you apply the previous theorem ok. So, apply previous theorem so, uh, with that remark uh, so the minimizing j v over k is equivalent to minimize norm of v minus f tilde over a ok. So, that is it. So, then uh, uh, this is essentially the first theorem we have proved this is the first theorem we proved uh, apply it to get the result apply it to get the result ok. 
ഓക്കെ അപ്ലൈ ടു ഗെറ്റ് എ റിസൾട്ട് വാട്ട് എവർ യു വാണ്ട് ദിസ് ഈസ് വാട്ട് യു ഗെറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് എഫ് ടിൽഡ് ഓഫ് യു യു വി മൈനസ് യു വിത്ത് റെസ്പെക്ട് ടു എ ലെസ് ദാൻ ഈക്വൽ ടു സീറോ വിച്ച് ഗിവ്സ് ദ റിക്വയർഡ് റിസൾട്ട് റിക്വയർഡ് റീ റൈറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് റിക്വയർഡ് തിയറി Okay. That's it. All right. Now we are, uh, uh, the condition of symmetry it gives you the inner product here defines an inner product, uh, but then uh, the variational inequality is also true without the uh, symmetry assumption on A. This is the theorem due to Stambachia. but of course you don't get a minimization problem in that case uh, so you only get the variation inequality and the uh, uh, the trivial proof which we have given using is essentially applying increase representation theorem and renormal uh, uh, redefining the inner product that proof will not work so let me try to give a proof of that theorem so theorem stempakia so let a be continuous elliptic no symmetry assumption bilinear form form on h okay uh, and f is in h then there exists a unique u in k and of course your k is there and uh, k subset of h closed to convex this we are always assuming convex uh, such that a of u v minus u uh, greater than or equal to f v minus u uh, for all v in k okay. so this is a similar theorem which we have proved so you see you have this thing here okay all right so let me give a proof to require some strength so let me go to the next page so we'll give a proof so proof so let me do it in two three, so that you can read this one so let u belongs to h be fixed let u belongs to h be fixed and then v going to v going to a u v is linear continuous and all that is linear continuous so that implies by applying that result is a every linear function can be written as an inner product for an element so there is an element implies there is an element in h that element you call it a u so there exists a u we denote this a u there is an element exists that element depends on u so we call it there is an element a h such that a u v is equal to a u v for all v in h this is just a representation theorem so that means there is a mapping a from h to h so the linear by linear functional gives a linear operator continuous linear operator so it's a simple exercise you should work out this exercise a is also linear which you need a proof initially it's given a, a is also linear and continuous and by ellipticity so these are all part of exercise uh, and uh, norm of a u this is continuity less than or equal to the same m into a u 
because the continuity estimate of a u and then a u u this is a small a u u this is greater than or equal to alpha into norm u square. These are all you can immediately prove it as an exercise. It is almost trivial, but uh, make sure that if you are learning this topic, uh, make sure that it is the. Therefore, what is our problem? So, we have to prove that we are to prove that we have to prove this right. Prove that a u v minus u is greater than or equal to f v minus u. This is what you want to prove it. So, this is equivalent to proving I am not yet there, but it is an equivalent to proving a u v minus u. So, the a u so a u v minus u is equal to capital a u v minus u. So, I take uh, f here v minus u bringing is greater than or equal to 0 ok. This is equivalent. So, I may not uh, write all the time so, we are going to what we are going to do is that basically our inequality problem we are going to convert it into a fixed point problem ok. This is true for all v in h. So, you have to find u in k this one. So, you have to find u in k such that for all v in uh, yeah sorry v, uh, for all v in k in the dimension body dimension here v in k. So, let me check uh, what I have done here yeah it is correctly written. So, I will do a small trick. So, choose rho positive ok. Then this is equivalent to this is a slight small trick which you will be doing in analysis all the time rho of a u minus rho of f uh, v minus u greater than or equal to 0. Now, this is how I am going to write a projection inequality. So, I will add this is add and subtract minus rho of f. So, ok rho of f uh, plus u minus u v minus u greater than or equal to 0. So, I will write it as a uh, less than or equal to inequality that is you always write for a projection inequality. So, I will write rho of f. So, I will write rho of f minus rho of a u plus u minus u v minus u is uh, less than or equal to 0. These are all for v. Now, look at this one. This inequality the above inequality is true. This is precisely the projection inequality we have proved. The above inequality is what you want to prove is true if this one the if uh, p k of this one this portion is a projection of u we will look at it. So, that means p k p k of u should be the projection that is what the projection inequality rho of f minus rho of a u plus u is equal to u that is what you want. You want that to the projection of u right that one. So, this uh, so we define a map f from h to h by f of v is equal to p k of the projection rho of f minus rho of a u 
plus a oh sorry b. So, a v plus v. So, you define that ok rho of f minus rho f a v. So, uh, so therefore, inequality is true inequality is true if and only if f has a fixed point f has a unique fixed point ok. So, all right. So, we show we can actually show that. So, you want to show f has a f is a contraction. So, I will uh, uh, so the two steps I will do this one. So, first you derive f of v 1 this we have answered this it is a projection. So, the f is a projection. So, the projection decreases the distance f v 2 is less than or equal to you can just verify this one uh, norm of v 1 minus v 2. So, let me write the one as a minus a f will get cancelled and a into a into v 1 minus v 2 this we have done p k of x 1 minus p k of x 2 is less than or equal to norm of x 1 minus x 2 v 2 ok. So, uh, so you do that one. So, you square it and expand it f of v 1 minus f of v 2 square. So, you do this computation and then I will write an inequality this is less than or equal to 1 minus uh, 2 rho alpha apply these inequalities plus rho square m square into norm of v 1 minus v 2 square expand it and do this one. So, what we need is here. So, we need this to be less than 1 we require this to be less than 1. So, let me write it separately in the next page. Okay. So, we need for that inequality to be true we need uh, 1 minus rho 2 rho alpha plus rho square m square should be less than 1 this is what our question. So, so choose 0 less than rho to get the above inequality this is if and on uh, this uh, this is true if let me not write if this is true uh, if uh, choose rho less than 2 alpha by m square ok. So, you once you choose this one this will imply this one that it will imply f is a contraction ok f is a contraction and you get a fixed point and you will get the Stambachia theorem that imply Stambachia is an inequality. Okay. Now, a simple corollary if k equal to m k equal to v is a subspace subspaces are a, 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 a closed subspace subspace closed contained in h ok and subspaces are always convex. So, there is no need to verify all the subspaces are much more than convexity the entire line is there convexity means only between two elements are there ok. So, you have a convexity so 
you have a u v minus u greater than or equal to f v minus u. So, because of the subspace u and v are in v for uh, u is in v and this is for all v in v. So, I can choose v equal to arbitrarily. So, I can uh, replace now I can take a replace v by v plus u because v is in u v is in v u is in v v plus u is also in v v in v by v plus u in the inequality because it is arbitrary. So, I can replace v by v plus u in v that will imply you will get your a I use the same notation the replaced one v replaced by v plus u. So, you get your a u v greater than or equal to f v for all v in v. Okay. And now again it is a subspace now replace <coughs> v by minus v that will imply a u v less than or equal to f v. In other words you get equality implies equality a u v equal to f v for all v in v and you are looking for solution u in v. Okay. So, in particular if you take v equal to h uh, in particular a special case particular take v equal to h and you get your what we call it a the famous lax milgram lemma milgram lemma uh, let h be a h a b as above b h a a means the bilinear form b as above f is in h then there exists a unique u in h such that a u v is equal to the a equality problem. So, these are called unconstrained minimization if it is a a is a symmetric it will become characterized by a minimization problem. So, when you have a minimization with constraint you will get inequality when you get a, a, a minimization without constraint it will lead to equality. So, okay. so the constraint minimization problem uh, leads to in uh, leads to inequalities unconstrained problem leads to equality h so, you can solve this problem. So, it is a very nice problem you can do it. Further if A is symmetric this is any without any assumption if A is symmetric U is characterized by characterized by J U equal to u in h j u is equal to minimum of j v okay, where v in h and j v is equal to half of a v v minus f v. Okay. So, you can do that. So, that is the famous and we are going to see the application of uh, uh, this thing. So, let me state uh, one more important theorem 
and uh, I will prove that theorem. I will explain it in the next class, uh, but let me at this stage so that uh, we can straight away go to the proof. This is called the famous Babuska Brzee theorem. See, in application, you will see more when you study even evolution equation. In applications, you may come across, up, uh, we may see abstract problems, abstract problems, abstract problem in the form of operators. Already you are seeing abstract problem, but you can also represent in, in a in, instead of the variational structure, you can uh, uh, do in terms of the abstract uh, operator form. Okay, abstract operator form. Something like du by dt equal to a u which we will see it in the evolution situation, but for systems this is systems also you will see in the elliptic form something like a u plus b star of u equal to f or k something else and b of u we will see examples. So, these are all motivated from examples okay. and b of u is equal to n. This may be in some Hilbert space and this will be in another Hilbert space etcetera. So, Babuska Bursi theorem gives conditions under which uh, the system of equations especially uh, many systems we may see at least a couple of things we will see later. So, let me just uh, uh, state the uh, Babuska or maybe uh, Babuska Brasi theorem so maybe I will stop here and then uh, continue in the next class it is already time for a class. So we will state this theorem and try to give a proof of it uh, and the proof is based on uh, what is called a Fredholm alternative. So it is an operator equations I will try to no, almost sketch so, but we will be using the Fredholm alternative. So, it is a good time to recall and study what this Fredholm alternative is all about. Thank you, thank you. Very